Welcome to uh, another uh, webinar presented by Baker Baines. Of course, today our topic for our webinar is what's new for infrastructure Autodesk 2024 releases. Uh, firstly, it'll be myself, Yeslin Play. I am a BIM technical specialist in civil infrastructure here at Baker Baines. Joining me today is also my colleague, Shweb Yunus, who is a senior BIM te technical specialist in civil infrastructure and mining. We specialize in three things. First one being consulting, where we deal with process and business assessments, BIM consulting, data management, simulation, CAD and CAM. Followed by education, where we deal with accredited classroom and virtual training. Uh, we also deal with customized user and project-based training. We then in the space of software and hardware, where we are an Autodesk Gold partner. We also partner with a few cool brands. Uh, the first one being Autodesk, which most of you are aware of. It is seen as one of the biggest, if not the biggest in the BIM space. We then partner with Clear Edge 3D. This is mainly if you're dealing with point cloud and if you want to automate your modeling. We then deal with Cool Orange on the data management side of things, Leica from a hardware reality, reality capture point of view. And finally, uh, we also have CAD Learning, which is an online learning platform with accredited Autodesk content. Uh, from a segmentation point of view, we operate in the building, civil, energy, process, plant, and manufacturing spaces. So, today's agenda. Uh, we're going to dive right into the Autodesk AEC collection. We're then going to go into the what's new for infrastructure. I will then hand over to my colleague, Shweb Yunus, who will run you all to recap Pro, InfraWorks, and Civil 3D. The Autodesk AEC collection. What is it? The Autodesk AEC collection is made up of a numerous number of softwares that help you design better. Here we have the AEC collection and I've highlighted all the software programs that we will be touching on today. Uh, I will be touching on Revit structures and robot structures. And then I'll hand over to my colleague, Shweb Yunus, who will be touching on InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and Recap Pro. So let's get into the What's New for Infrastructure Autodesk 2024 releases. Uh, before we get going into the Revit Structures point of view, I'd like to highlight a few new enhancements and new additions to Revit 2024. The first one being the Mic Insights in the Revit Home. So the latest version of Revit, Revit 24, 2024, introduces a fresh addition to the Revit homepage called the My Insights panel. The Revit My Insights assists users in optimizing their design tasks and saving time by analyzing their usage data, identifying their patterns and their workflows, and quantifying frequently used commands and keystrokes. By doing so, Revit provides more valuable insight and recommendations on how to enhance efficiency during the project uh, design process. Revit also offers a range of info, uh, information, recommendations, uh, hints, and tips aimed to enhance your efficiency while working within the software. Uh, these resources are designed to provide valuable guidance and support, helping you improve your workflow. Uh, the page displays cards. These cards you're able to react with, and if you wish to learn more, you can simply click the Learn More option to access additional online content, providing further information and resources related to the topics at hand. The next really cool uh, enhancement is the introduction for the dark theme in its user interface, specifically for the first level elements, such as the properties palette, the project browser, options bar, status bar, and your view control bar. Users now have the flexibility to choose between a dark or a light theme for the drawing area as well by access accessing the corresponding options either from the ribbon or the options dialog. Uh, this allows for a more um, customizable and visual com visually comfortable experience within the Revit environment. Another really handy feature uh, introduced in Revit 2024 is the search in project browser. So, 
the newest uh, update introduces a new search function, which is located at the top of your project browser. Uh, this addition allows users to easily search and locate uh, specific elements or components within their project. Uh, by utilizing the search feature, users can quickly find the desired items, streamline their navigation, and enhance their overall uh, productivity within Revit. Revit also in initiates automatic, automatically and dynamically up with, so it updates the display results in real time as you type. This means that as you enter your search query, the search feature will instantly generate and present a relevant results as seen in these uh, pictures. So those are just a few uh, cool features that have been handed, uh, uh, up enhanced or added into Revit 2024. Let's get into some of the enhancements in the Revit site sector. So uh, a new enhancement is the in the site design is the topo solids. So in the latest update in Revit, the traditional topo surfaces feature has been replaced with a new feature called topo solids. Uh, this change introduces a more advanced and robust tool for creating and manipulating your uh, terrain data and site geometry within Revit. Uh, to reflect these new capabilities introduced in Revit, specifically related to the Topo Solid features and other uh, enhanced and other advancements in the massing and site functionality, uh, the massing and site ripper now includes new icons compared to uh, 2023. Uh, so there are two methods available in Revit for creating these new topo solids. The first being the sketch uh, the boundary. Basically, you will sketch the boundary and define the elevation points. In this method, users can sketch the boundary of the desired topography and specify elevation points to define the shapes and contours of their terrain. Uh, the second method is using uh, the create it uh, create from an import file. Users can create a topo solid by importing an external file. This can be done by importing a CAD file or perhaps a CSV format. This process of upgrading the existing topo surfaces from previous versions to a new topo solid feature is made simple. Uh, with the new generate topo solid found in the contextual tools. This tool enables users to easily convert their existing topo surfaces into topo solids seamlessly. The next new uh, uh, enhancement is the site design graded region. So Revit 2024 offers a powerful feature to help reduce site construction costs through the balanced cut and fill analysis. This feature allows users to determine the costs associated with landscape modifications uh, during the site development to pro uh, by providing detailed reports on the cut and fill volumes. Um, to perform the cut and fill analysis, Revit uh, introduces a concept of gradient regions, which can be applied to your topo solids. The gradient tool allows users to designate specific areas of Topography as demolished and create a copy of the topo solid with a matching boundary in the current project phase. Using the point shape editor, users can then grade their different areas of their topography by adding, deleting, or modifying their elevations. This allows for precise adjustment to the terrain to achieve the desired gradient design. To obtain uh, accurate cut and fill information, users can also generate a uh, topo solid schedule that can plot the cut and fill volumes of the graded region. This schedule will provide you valuable insight in the earthwork quantities required for site preparation and aids in the evaluating of construction costs. So a quick overview video uh, showcasing these tools in action. So Revit 2024 assists in enhancing the excellence of your design by introducing the topo solids as mentioned. So enabling a more efficient modeling of topography and documentation of landscape projects as seen. Topo solids are families created from CAD imports representing solid geometric with intricate compound layers and type parameters as seen on screen. You can now also grade surface points more efficiently using the point editor, which functions similar to the family shape editor. Additionally, you can 
have the ability to display patterns aligned across entire surfaces or edited floors. We're now going to head into the Revit structures segment. Uh, the first new enhancement is the additional path alignment option for freeform rebar. Revit 2024 offers enhanced options for aligning bars in your rebar set. Users now have the ability to choose their preferred alignment method and can align the bars parallel to the selected planner faces using the align constraint feature. You have the ability to adjust the settings for freeform rebar now. This can be done by either using the bar alignment parameter in your properties palette of the structural rebar or by utilizing the toggle option directly on your canvas. The next enhancement is the stirrup orientation for freeform rebar. To modify the orientation of the aligned distributed rebar's closed stirrup, you can conveniently toggle it by pressing the spacebar. This functionality allows you to easily switch the orientation of the stirrups within the rebar set. It is important to take note that this feature specifically applies to closed stirrups in the set, providing a convenient method to adjust their positioning as needed. So as a structural engineer using Revit, you can now have the, you now have the ability to apply posted loads to specific areas of your panels and members. This enhancement allows for more precise and targeted load assignments, enabling engineers to accurately analyze and simulate the effects of loads on specific portions of their structural elements. Additionally, in the latest version of Revit, point loads can now be placed at any location on their host element. Furthermore, another notable feature is the ability to copy loads to other hosts. This functionality streamlines the load application process, allowing you as the engineer to easily replicate loads from one host element to multiple others. As you can see, this will save you a ton of time, especially when dealing with repetitive load assignments across similar elements, resulting in increased efficiency and productivity in, during your design process. Uh, so this feature was brought in as an update in 2023, but has now been enhanced for Revit 2024. The new update in Revit introduces the ability to create curved panels. This can be achieved by utilizing the panel by extrusion command and selecting your curve or curve or line to define the shape of the panel. By following this process, users can easily generate curved panels within their project. The next uh, enhancement and addition to Revit 2024 is the patterns and color for structural area loads. So structural area loads can now be visually presented using color coding techniques. This functionality allows for, uh, for, allows for the engineer to distinguish uh, the different load natures through using different colors. By applying these different codes, the documentation of the analytical model becomes more clearer and more visually informative. Uh, we also now know when working with loads, the scale can now be controlled via the structural settings dialog box. Here you can set the minimum and maximum loads value and set the actual length of the arrows. This is useful to visually check the load magnitude. Another cool addition is the custom physical analytical association. So in the newest version of Revit, uh, users can now create multiple associations between elements to facilitate better coordination between the physical and your analytical model. This enhancement, uh, this enhanced functionality allows users to establish multiple connections between analytical panels or members and a single physical object or vice versa. For instance, so the next type of, uh, the next enhancement in Revit 2024 is the detailed results reports for connection automation rules. Uh, engineers can now utilize the reports generated within Revit, utilizing the insights provided in its comprehensive reports to enhance your management of your steel connections. So for instance, efficiently determine and monitor the placement of connections, you can identify instances where connections were already present, and you also have the ability now to recognize situations where connections are not uh, required. 
The next new addition to Revo 2024 is the bar bending details on reinforcing reinforcement drawings. Uh, so you now you're able to enhance your precision precision of your reinforcing draw, reinforcement drawings and ensure accurate instructions for bar bending and installation by incorporating a bar bending detail to your schedule. You're now able to utilize the dedicated tools available in the ribbon to include bending details in your plans, in your sections, and even your elevation views. These details can be placed either inside or outside the view crop region. You can adjust the parameters for the rebar bending details to customize them according to the specific requirements of your reinforcing drawing. So we can go through a quick overview video showcasing some of these tools in action. As I mentioned, with Revo 2024, it introduces a new powerful feature for rebar documentation, specifically designed to aid concrete detailers. One notable addition is the ability to create bending details for selected bars and place them practically anywhere adjacent to your concrete element. This flexibility extends as well to the schedules, allowing bending detailers to, to be incorporated. For freeform rebar, enhanced control over stirrup orientation and new path alignment options provide greater precision in the detailing workflow. These advancements enable detailers to generate more comprehensive shop drawings that adhere to industry's best practices, resulting in reduced fabrication and on-site rework. Structural engineers also benefit from the time-saving enhancements in the structural loads. This update enables the application of hosted loads to specific areas of the panel and members allowing for more versatility and accurate definition of structural loads and increase your flexibility in your analytical modeling. As seen, we are able to place our loads anywhere across the panel. Additionally, color coding aids in distinguishing load natures, leading to a clearer documentation of the analytical model. The association of multiple analytical panels or members to a single physical object or vice versa improves your coordination updates between your physical and your analytical model, ultimately reducing your overall design time and increasing your productivity as seen on screen. We're now going to jump into robot structures. A few new additions have been added. We're going to start with the integration with Revit. The significance of Revit in facilitating coordination between your physical and your analytical model, as well as, as well as its ability to provide a more accurate and flexible analytical model geometry has led to the adjustment of the Revit robot uh, interpol, uh, bi-directional exchange of data. The focus now lies on achieving a truly bi-directional exchange of geometry, specifically emphasizing the emphasizing on the analytical model and its associated materials and its section properties. This ensures seamless and uh, comprehensive transfer of information between your Revit model and your robot analytical model, enabling efficient collaboration and, 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 and analysis throughout the design process. Some other improvements to the Revit robot analysis link uh, we now have a simplified transfer of uniformed loads uh, on panels to robot, enabling, a, enabling the round trip of steel design parameters between robot and Revit. We also have the ability now to transfer the transfer of arc members from Revit to robot, which is made far more seamless, uh, increasing your productivity and your design time. Another new feature included is the improved load distribution within robot. Significant enhancements have been made to improve the quality and the performance of your load distribution from cladding to beams, uh, to columns and your panels. Several performance enhancements have been implemented to enhance the load distribution. We have the corrected application of distribution of linear loads on panels 
we now have the correct duplication of linear loads applied to panels with a calculation model using finite element mesh. We also have an improved the performance of the load distribution on your cladding. So that brings me to the end of my segment where we delved into the build space. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague. Thank you, Yeslin. Let me just share my screen. There we go. All right, so now we're going to be jumping into the civil infrastructure component of this uh, presentation. And I can tell you that we've got some really cool stuff uh, coming up, especially on the different segments that I'm going to be covering. So let's start off with Recap Pro. Uh, if you're not familiar with Recap Pro, it's the engine or the application that you would use normally to process your point cloud into an RCP format. And then from there, you can take it into whichever Autodesk authoring tool you'd like. So Civil 3D, Revit, Inventor, Plant 3D, AutoCAD, whatever it, your flavor is. So these were the four or five main features. Uh, the favorite one of mine being the one in bold. So if you are a Faro user and you are using premium scans, we do now have support for that, which is absolutely great. Uh, the classification management has become so much more better. The desktop connector, so if you are working with the ACC, uh, that connection has actually been streamlined. And of course, the linear feature extraction. So the goal of the 2024 release of Recap Pro is, of course, to optimize your data extraction of your existing conditions or aspects. So let's jump into them very quickly before I give you a quick overview of the technology itself. So, of course, from the Faro side, uh, simple, you can now have support for premium scans. So there is an API that will link to your, your scene, Faro scene. So if you are using that, it is now supported in Recap Pro. Of course, the desktop connector has become a big part of our world, uh, especially with the ascension of ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud, and it's now compatible with version 16. So that is pretty, pretty cool. The next thing is the classification management. Now, if you've been dealing with reality capture like I have uh, on different types of projects, uh, the classification makes your life much more easier. Uh, in terms of segmenting the point cloud into different features or recognitions. Now it extends the classification management and automatic ground classification to scans imported, not only from like one source, but all different types of raw scan data that you would get. So you can create a really cool combination of reality capture. Remember there's different ways of capturing data. You could use your UAVs or your drones. You could use your fixed scanners on the tripods. You could use a handheld or a slam. Uh, you could use a mobile mapping unit. I mean, there's so many ways to do it. And now with the classification enhancements, it's going to make our life that much more better. In terms of my favorite feature from Recap Pro, I would say it's the linear feature extraction, which you're going to see in a bit. Uh, what it does is it uses ML or heuristic algorithms, so machine learning to extract geometry. If you're not familiar with the heuristic algorithm, uh, in simple terms, it uses mathematical computation to replace all the traditional ways of computing things, right? So it solves problems using a quicker method, more uh, versatile to our environment. And as you can see on the screen, when I'm extracting, for example, the edge of the road, I can actually add uh, code data sets to it. So that is also very nice, especially if you are a civil 3D user. Of course, uh, from a functionality perspective, it's also much more lightweight. Uh, it doesn't make your model that heavy because now you're bringing in specific elements into your civil 3D. So let's take a look, a quick show reel of sorts. So I'm gonna start off with my favorite one. It's the linear feature. So you can see we are working in Autodesk Construction Cloud. Okay, so this is not on the desktop, it is actually in the cloud. And what I'm doing is you can add your reference points so the algorithm can pick it up. We then can add a tag to those points, uh, which is quite nice, uh, especially if you are modeling corridors, right? Your code sets in terms of your sub assemblies and stuff, or whatever makes sense to you. You can actually customize it on the fly. Uh, once we have those detail points, what happens if the road becomes non-uniform? So let's check it out. So as you can see, the algorithm is working and look at that. 
we can actually extract it. But what happens, like I said, when it's non-uniform? Here we have a barrier. Now what do we do? It will stop because there's no uniformity in what you have actually uh, defined previously. So we can just move the points and now it'll pick up the common points and start uh, kicking it. And as you can see, the cross-section view, you're actually picking up that shape pretty, pretty accurately. Okay, so we can repeat this process for whatever we'd like and then export it to whichever format we would find suitable. I would prefer land XML. You might prefer DXF, but uh, experience, I would say land XML. And here we are, it's in several 3D, right? So now I can use that. It comes in as feature lines. And I mean, the rest of it is history. I mean, you can apply your normal civil 3D tools to extract whichever data you would like. So let's get into InfoX, right? I think it's a fan favorite or user favorite. And there have been a few uh, integrations for 24 uh, in terms of productivity and optimization. Uh, from the optimization side, it's check for updates. So we're trying to integrate the workflows so that if there's a change across different softwares, the integration and the interoperability between these solutions is much more streamlined. From a productivity perspective, uh, those four points on the screen are the main ones. So you can now dynamically measure the elevation on your model. You'll see that in a bit. Of course, you also have the option to display custom or optional parameters. This, I think, is a very cool tool, a very cool mapping functionality, because it also leads to improved support for rev families and, of course, the category mapping. Now, if you're not up to date with this, the family component of the, for example, the bridge workflow was typically done in Inventor or only exclusively done in Inventor. Now we can actually do it in Revit. So you, it brings in that functionality to the AC collection. Of course, you do have the BIM exchange that you can use between Inventor and Revit, but uh, in short, you can do the parameters in Revit. You can model the family and import it. So that is pretty, pretty cool. So just to give you some recap on this, uh, pun intended, the elevation tool, as you can see, this is on a bridge deck, right? And you can go get some accurate elevation. You can put in some labeling in there. And of course, you can interrogate your design much more better. You know, the elevation points, especially when corridor and bridge links, it's critical, absolutely critical. So you can do it whether it's in 2D or 3D. It's totally up to you. And you can confirm it without keep, keep on switching between Revit and InfoWork. So that is a really, really cool thing. Now, this sometimes gets users a bit confused, uh, especially if you are starting your journey in this uh, BIM space of InfraWorks, Revit, and Civil 3D, as well as Inventor. In short, what happens is when you import your data, you need some compulsive parameters to be met, that being the green ticks on your screen. So if your data is not formatted to those uh, parameter descriptions, it will not pull in and it will not be parametric. Now we can omit certain data or we can only specify certain parameters if we require. So it makes your mapping much more easier and it reduces duplication. Also, if you are new to Revit or if you don't use it that much like myself, uh, you could find like creating families a bit daunting. It's not actually, but uh, what we have done now is we can actually generate the 2D cross section of it. So before you had to actually incorporate the extrusion and then from there you give it a unit so that the par uh, parametric nature of the element or the family updates when you are making a change in inference. Now uh, we can just do a simple 2D and you can bring that in. And of course, again, we come back to the category mapping. Now, depending on what you are designing, it will fall in a, uh, let's call it under a heading or under a segment in Revit when you are mapping. So whether it's a bridge or uh, what type of bridge component, whether it's a pier, whether it's a pier cap, whether it's uh, the deck itself, I mean, you would need to map it correctly, right? So that it will allow you for much more easier integration. And of course, it will impact your scheduling of your parts in Revit. So they made it much more easier because now with the drop downs, you can go and map it quite easily. And again, it's gonna be make you more productive on the scheduling uh, as well as your design requirements. 
And this is just a quick snapshot of more or less how the updates work. So like I said, we are trying to keep it more seamless. So if I'm working on the road corridor, I've got the bridge engineer working on the bridge, and we've got the, uh, let's call it the model coordinator in InfraWix. If anything changes, we all should be updated, right? So another big component of that is actually the family. So the family or the parametric object done in Revit, if there is a change to the original file, we can actually have a simple check for updates option now. So it actually allows you to update it in real time. So it's dynamic. As soon as I hit check for updates, it will update my InfraWorks model. And I'll also get an update in Civil 3D if the bridge is linked so that it updates it on my long section or my profile. So let's take a look at it. I hope I gave a good explanation of it, but I think this will make more sense. So here we are, this is the elevation of 0.2. It's found under your usual measure command. And you can see here, it's absolutely accurate, uh, especially with the snaps now. So you can go and interrogate certain portions, uh, especially when it comes to your bearings and stuff on a bridge, it's quite critical. Here we come with the actual optional parameters. You can see, like I said, the green one is the ones that have been read. Okay. And of course you would have certain compulsory parameters. So you can toggle between that as you'd like. Here we're doing the actual modeling of the component that we would like to use. Of course, you need to add some param parametric nature to it. So there's the RFA. Remember that was purely 2D. Uh, like I said, you need to customize it in terms of the component type. And then here, once we bring it into from Revit, we can decide which component we would like to map. Of course, it will automatically pick up the compulsory elements and then I could simply apply it. So here's my custom girder and here we are, updates instantly and I could apply it to the rest of my girders or my group. In this case, when I go for group, maybe for the design loading, that's fine, right? So again, very, very streamlined on that. Now, when it comes to the category mapping features, here we can see you have a whole list. Now this will come in or it will draw in from your Revit family. So the more you have, the more you would probably see on that list. And then we can go and put it under whichever category it likes. Now, depending on our change or design iteration, sometimes you might need to update the family. We can update the style and you would see on the left, it updates to a typical I section. And then of course, you could always take it into other solutions. I mean, Twin Motion is available now. Uh, if you really want to get it into like really cool rendering, you got 3ds Max, which is the king of it, I would say. And I mean, InfraWix is pretty good on its own. Right, so Civil 3D. Right, so Civil 3D is the powerhouse, hands down, for civil infrastructure design. Uh, if you're doing anything horizontal, definitely this is your powerhouse. Now, we always try to create more of the optimization side, meaning we want it to be faster, we might more iterative, and especially with all of the programming and visual scripting that's going into it, the integrations, you really need Civil 3D to be beefed up. And you can see these were the core themes of 2024. So before I get into the efficiency, the main thing was the digitization of existing transportation systems. For maintenance, rehab projects, uh, even new projects, you're gonna need the existing network it's a key part of our projects. We're going to need that for tie-ins, existing conditions, whether we're going to be upgrading or reducing, whether we're going to be discontinuing routes. It does happen depending on the urbanization in your area, right? So you can see this big part on the corridor transitions, which is absolutely great. I have used it recently, pretty easy now, making it too easy, I would say. But uh, good stuff, right? And of course, if you are in rail uh, with your CANS turnouts and stuff like that, the API that you're going to see is pretty cool. In terms of sustainability, I think that's a core theme. Uh, it's with the sustainability goals as well, in line with them. So the connector ArcGIS has become a big part of our world, uh, designing much more, uh, I would say, thoughtful infrastructure, because now you're really incorporating things around it. And last but not least is, of course, the civil design efficiencies. 
sub-assemblies, I'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, because again, a lot of people get confused with that. The Explorer is still fairly new. We haven't seen a lot of people adopt it yet. So uh, people on school, professionals, please go check it out. It's really cool, especially on the project management side of things. So go check it out. It's built into Simple 3D now. For the networks, there have been some enhancements from modeling perspective. And then of course, general performance enhancements, right? So you can see those are the three key themes that we're focused on for 2024. Now let's jump in here. Let's start off with the efficiencies. Now sub assemblies. Yeah, you have a few options. Uh, I would say the easiest option or the lazy option would be uh, from Polyline. However, you still have to assign your code sets and links to it. And that's where again, people kind of get confused, but it's not difficult. I mean, you could actually use the help file. The help file is absolutely great showing you or detailing how these assemblies are created. But what we've done now is that we can actually create a file path that links into a specific project. So let's say you have a team and you would say, okay, these are the set sub assemblies we're gonna be using on this project uh, based on our calculations, our design, our engineering. We want the, probably the drafting team or the design team or the BIM team to use only these approved, uh, I use that word loosely, but let's say it's those assemblies that we are approving for this project. So we can link it in directly here. That's where you can see the red block. You can see the sub assemblies will have a link in there. That is actually a file part that we'll create and it helps everyone on the project to keep in track and also stay uniformly to the design requirements. So that is the main thing. And of course, the synchronization between the sub assemblies. So let's say I created the sub assembly for my BIM team and I've published it. And we've realized upon engineering integration that we might need to modify it and we want to control it from our library. So I can make a quick uh, change to it on the codes, uh, save it, and the BIM team, the modelers, they can actually refresh or hit an update on it, update the assemblies in the corridor, and boom, done. So it's more streamlined, it's more controlled, uh, especially working on transportation projects. Uh, people can go off script quite a bit, and I really enjoy this feature so I can keep a control of my team. All right, so that's what we have done for the efficiencies for sub assemblies. Project Explorer, again, like I said, a lot of us are a bit new to it, but just to sum it up, we have property set tab that can be viewed and incorporated. Now with the whole open BIM charge where we are going for data is king, of course, we, incorporate these property sets into our metadata or vice versa or bi-directionally. It's a very, very critical thing. Like you can see on the screen there, we've got contractor data inspection, uh, metadata, property sets, whatever you want to call them. They are now available in Project Explorer. So if you get some good model data, good parametric data, you can go and add these, you can find them, you can edit them so that when it comes to facilities management, um, an asset management of an infrastructure cycle, it will help the governing body or the custodian of that infrastructure to manage much more better. Pressure networks, so there are a few things. I would say these are the four main things. It's more from a visual perspective, to be quite honest. So the first, of course, you can have a block. That block can be custom to your company, your department, whatever you want to call it, to display the bins in the plan view. So doing a lot of utility projects, we need to see sometimes whether it's actually a PI, whether we are having what type of bend, it's gonna be a horizontal and vertical bend, it's gonna be a combination, what is happening there? So you can create a block that will replica that. So it's quite nice to see as a key on plan. That's my simple terms on that. Uh, you can, again, from a visual perspective, you can add hatch patterns to the pressure network. Again, totally up to you what you would like, depending on what type of fittings or appurtenances you are using. You can key them quite nicely, so there's a uniform type of feel to your joint. So that is also quite nice. Uh, when it comes to the vertical rotation, uh, especially on the branching fittings, right? 
it's it has been a bit of a challenge a little bit but now what they've done is we've created an automatic vertical rotation so you can align that with the branch pipe runs on the whole slope so your rise of runs or runs of rise whichever one you are using for your slopes you can align that much more uniformly and it's much more automatic so that you can actually manage it a bit better so that also is pretty nice uh, especially if you have long runs of course we would normally have standard lengths but generally depending on the nature of your project the runs can get quite long so you need to keep your eye on that and last but not least <laughs> this one i i've heard a lot about last year uh, like how do you would connect to a t to t or a y they've added it short term so you can connect the pipe run to another pipe run at a t okay y or a cross so if you have a four-way uh, where two pipes are going creating like an x you've got a y or you've got a t it's in added to it so go give it a shot it's a cool part for the pressure network section of the 2024 release the arc just part of it again it has become a big part especially on large scale projects uh, where now we can actually well if you haven't heard of this there's a direct integration with arc just online uh, it's an esri esri and autodesk platform that integration so if you have a gis professional in your midst and they have a database online they can grant you access to it or if you are working with a municipality they can give you the data you can import it as that file, whatever it may be, you have those links. But for the ArcGIS connector, especially for online, now we can import objects from ArcGIS as AutoCAD. So it can be point, it can be polyline or polygon. Again, it depends on the quality of your data, right? If you have good data, you can have a lot of metadata. However, if you just have the representation of it, maybe from a saves back edits, that was pushed to the GIS database or bi-directional in nature, you're going to have that. And then if you just have the polyline, I mean, in Civil 3D, you can create an object data table and attach to that uh, elements. Can take a bit of time, to be honest. But once you have that data and you save it back to the original GIS database, you're good to go. That data is there. So that's a great thing as well. Uh, you can configure the settings. You'll see it in a little bit where you can decide how you want things to be imported, displayed in Civil 3D. And of course, it, that includes the ARC objects, but remember it's only subjected to the portal only. Uh, when it comes to the digitization, this is more on the uh, transitioning part of things. So in short, you see when you create your transitions normally in Civil 3D, you have, a, you have two options, right? One is you could actually create the transition by drawing in a polyline, targeting to that polyline, gripping in an elevation based on your slope, changing the uh, corridor uh, region to match that, depending on the slope orientation of your widening. That is the easiest way. The second one I would prefer is where you would use a simple widening tool that will allow you to control the taper length as well as the transition length. And now we have an option where you have the corridor transition that will appear on the ribbon. And then it will open it as the panorama, what you've seen on the screen. So you'll see that there, you can go ahead and toggle the transitions or the changes, so you can adjust the baselines quite easily. So that can help you control it, whether it's linear or reverse curve or whatever it may be. So you can go and tell it, okay, I wanted to start at station 200 to 300 or 200 to 250. This is the type of transition I'm going to use. You can replace the cross section or the assembly for it if required and you can see the results at the bottom of the screen. So the .NET and the API have really streamlined it if you're not going into an API or .NET editing. Simply just use it from the ribbon. And then of course, Rail, the last one before I show you a quick overview. You'll see that Rail has hit a lot of uh, interest uh, over the past few years. The visualization component is fantastic, you can see that is literally in Civil 3D. That looks pretty good. But you have more control in Civil 3D so that when you design your corridors, your transportation corridors, you can get what you're seeing on the screen. So you can import that data design uh, to use in Civil 3D. You can uh, draft it quite nicely. You have a lot of the uh, ribbon pop-ups that help you to customize in terms of the APIs. And of course, the turnouts are more manageable. 
right? So it's much more automated. Think of like an Excel sheet. It's that type of vibe where you can actually import those data, uh, look at the turnouts, interrogate it much more better, put in your values, and boom, you would actually see the turnout update in real time. And then, of course, you need to apply your engineering knowledge to see if that is design compliant or not or suitable to your project requirements. So this is what's new in Civil 3D 2024. So let's start off with the actual sub-assemblies. Like I said, you will use a sub-assembly composer. Uh, you can see it's giving you a quick flashback of what I've just said. But the sub-assembly composer, again, still same. You would still create the assemblies as PKT files. But the thing is, you can go and add a file location to your tool palette. So here we are, we can go to our project. Uh, we can select the sub-assemblies and it is now linked. So once that is linked, you should see a tab that has been created. In this case, we just call it custom. And those were the assemblies that were created for this project. So we've got a tunnel. Here we are. Again, these are the code sets. Don't worry, it's not as daunting as it looks, right? Uh, it does take a bit of time to get uh, to wrap your head around, but once you do, you're pretty good. So once we've done that, we've made a few changes. We can hit refresh. You can see it gives you that normal hazard sign. And once I click update all the assemblies, you should see it adjust in width. So again, more control on your transportation projects rather than uh, letting your BIM team or drafts persons or modelers update it in the model. We want to have much more control of the data. And you can see it is linked quite nicely. The next one is the corridor transitions. Like I was saying, pretty nice tool. This one is a very nice tool. You'll see that edit transition option on your ribbon. You can zoom to the transition. So here we are. And then we can go and customize it, right? So you can see those flags show you the extent of the transition. We can also go step by step through it if we'd like. And we can also lock it depending. So you can see here, that's where we've got the ramp. So sometimes we, we don't want that to move. Maybe there's an existing house there. Or sometimes we have flexibility depending if it's a greenfield project. And we simply hit apply. So again, uh, as engineers, we normally like Excel and that makes your life a bit more easier. Now from a data aggregation, if you're a BIM manager or senior coordinator, you would like to pay attention to this. Now, when we are sorting data, of course, we've got the ArcGIS online that will come in. Now we can go and filter or select the layers that we would like to import. Uh, hopefully you have as much data as you can or you would contact maybe a service provider for that data, whichever one it is. And once we have the data, we can now go and edit it. So here we can decide what it is, first of all, what we want to use it as. You can see AutoCAD objects is now available and we can also drop it in the correct layer. So if you have a CAD standard, uh, which you can apply quite easily to Civil 3D, it can go into that designated layer or you can consolidate it at the end. The last one is the Project Explorer. I would think it's the last one, right? You can see that we have the option on the ribbon built in. So you should see it. If you don't, go to your Autodesk account and install it. But by default, I think 2024, it installs it off the bat. And here is the property set data I was talking about. So based on what you have on your model, you can go and customize that data, add it. Might not make sense to you as a designer right now, but if you are handing over the data in its as built maintenance facility management uh, stage, it is a wealth of knowledge to have. All right, so we are at the closing right now. So this is the AC collection. You can see it has been purpose built to create tools that have been used by architects, engineers, and construction professionals. So how can we help you pretty quickly? We can educate you, or if you're a business, we can assess and consult with you, or you can have a blend of both, right? So of course, educate is the more popular one on the professional side of things. So if your teams need to be trained or upskilled, so we've currently got three CPD courses that are in class or virtually. So that is also great. You can get your CPD uh, or we can facilitate it through us. The courses have been accredited by SICE and so on. We also got an online portal. So if unfortunately you can't make it to class, uh, you could subscribe to our portal and that's available 24 seven. You need an internet connection and you're good to go. Uh, this is quite a really exciting segment in our development as Baker Benz where we're creating localized content. So things that we hear in the market that people are actually struggling with, guides, tutorials, courses, it's on our website. So check out Transformation Tools. It's pretty cool. 
And of course, if you are a, I would say, intermediate to advanced user, or you have something quite challenging, we can create a customized course for you. The second one, which more I'm involved in, is actually on the assessing consult. So uh, talking to companies, organizations, municipalities, and so on, to digitally transform their processes. So we can do a BPA for you, uh, where we can look at your people, your processes, your technologies, uh, we can also look at your technology. So sometimes you might have an overload of technology or you might need a certain bit of technology to complete your puzzle. Uh, we can advise you on that. And my favorite one would be pilot projects. So if you've got a huge project, uh, we can grab a coffee, we can chat about it and we can create a plan where we could do it with you. And with that, I am going to bring it to a close. So thank you everyone for joining thank you yeslin uh, for your part on the structural part side it was really good and we hope to see you all soon